For more than 150 years, the NRA has been defined by men and women like all of you, loyal, hardworking citizens who believe in defending your families and your communities and our country. RFK Jr., I call him Jr. He, by the way, he's radical left. Don't think about it. Don't waste your vote. We need a conservative person with common sense. This guy is radical left who destroyed New York. They're taking down all of the energy components. We have the highest, and all of New England, actually. He's a disaster. He's radical left. RFK Jr. is radical left. Reminds me of this fly that's driving me crazy up here. This fly is brutal. I don't like flies. But RFK Jr. calls you a terrorist group. You know, he calls you a terrorist group. Can't vote for him. You can't, you know. Somebody said, well, they like his policy on vaccine. The other day he said, no, no, he'll go for the vaccine. He's, not, he's got no policy on anything. He's radical left. He always has been. His family is angry at him because he's doing this. They won't talk to him because they said, where the hell did this come from? And for some reason, for some reason, he's getting probably a little bit more. Biden hurting Biden a little bit more. But we can't waste any votes. We have to make sure we win. And I'm meeting, I don't know if you read, but I'm meeting next week, very soon, with the Libertarians, because largely they have so much of what we have. You know, they're also people of common sense, generally speaking. They have a couple of things that are a little different, but we have to join with them because they get their 3% every year, no matter who's running. And we have to get that 3% because we can't take a chance on Joe Biden winning. He's the worst president in the history of our country by far. We can't have... But RFK Jr. says bad, bad things. He calls you a terrorist group and I call you the backbone of America. That's a big difference, wouldn't you say? I'm not going to take anybody's guns away. My father was killed by guns. My uncle was killed by guns. I understand the, um, I understand how generally, generationally, that gun violence can harm societies or communities. I also understand there's more in this country and it's intolerable. School shootings are unacceptable. Mass shootings are unacceptable. We're having them every 21 hours, and that is unacceptable. Is it because of the proliferation of guns? The, the evidence indicates otherwise. The, the, and let me explain this. Um, the, the proportion of guns per home in this country has not increased. It, I think it's increased by a little less than 1% since 1970. And yet the mass shootings have proliferated beyond, but started since then, and now, you know, they're everywhere. There are other countries that have comparable numbers of guns. Uh, Switzerland, for example, the last, uh, the last mass shooting in Switzerland was 21 years ago. We're having mass shootings every 21 hours. Why is that? It can't be just because of the guns. It has to be something else. I've made a suggestion that we begin studying the other possible co-variables. Those, and this is what NIH should be doing. NIH should be studying, is it, you know, are, there, are video games contributing to that? Are, there's a social media, are the isolation, the alienation that people, could it be, could it have something to do with the proliferation of, of psychiatric drugs, particularly your SSRI. But your position is that you have a view of the facts or you believe empirically uh, that limiting gun access wouldn't solve the problem and therefore you don't want to limit gun access. I guess even before we go into all the, the comparative studies, what is the great concern? Is it a legal or constitutional concern? I mean, what is the great harm of trying to limit some of the gun access? Well, you know, the, Right now, we're in a part of the history, as I said, where we're more polarized than ever. You know, I grew up in Virginia. I spent uh, 
two years living in rural Alabama, another year living in rural South Dakota, and I understand that there are large communities in this country and cultures in this country that feel a cultural attachment to their gods. They see that it's part of the Constitution. So yeah, so for you, it's partly how people feel about it. Yeah. They, okay. It, right. I should it, mention many uh, countries that have tighter gun access have far lower fatalities, have almost no mass shootings. And the United States has four times Switzerland per capita. Times, okay, we have right, more guns yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, but I mean, but listen, Harry, let, you know, if we talk, if we talk sort of non-politically here, something happened that, you know, around the time of Columbine, where these mass shootings started happening, there's never been a time when I was a kid, we had gun clubs in our schools. People brought their guns. Kids brought 22 rifles to school. They weren't walking into classrooms and shooting people. Something changed. There has never been a time in human history where people walked into crowds of strangers and started killing them. Oh, you can't blame it completely on guns because the gun, it, you know, at the time the mass shootings increased, there was no increase, there was no coterminous increase in gun ownership. It has to be something else beside that. Clearly, the, 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 the enormous number of guns we have in this country contributes to gun violence. But if we cut the guns, would it, would it end the gun violence? I, first of all, I don't think, you know, particularly with the very expansionist um, interpretation of the Second Amendment that the Supreme Court has given, there's very little room that's, to move That's it. certainly and, the and legal reality. do it on the no. margins, and that's not going to change anything. But what it will do is it will increase the insecurity, the anger, the distrust, the suspicion of those people who feel very strongly about that issue. Yeah. And so for me, it does not seem yeah. like a, you know, I've made the commitment. I'm not going to take people's guns.